All right, again, welcome uh, to uh, this is video part two of just a, a conversation, discussion regarding uh, growing, changing, disciple making, and counseling issues. Uh, again, this is Patty and Don, Patty Somer, Don Robbins. And again, they had the opportunity back in February to uh, travel up to Indiana for a week long uh, counseling uh, conference and training. And so we're just sort of getting some takeaways and some thoughts, uh, talking through some things related to. Uh, the counseling flavor uh, of, of ministry and, uh, and helping people and so forth. And so the next question, guys, um, in your own life, what are some of the biggest tools uh, that God has used to change and grow you personally? Who wants to start? Don, I go think ahead. I will on this one. I immediately thought of prayer. That's the biggest tool that I think people underestimate in their life is, do you realize you have a relationship with Christ and you can talk to him at any time, anywhere, that um, you can pray for what your needs are, but also you can pray for others and with others, and uh, we forget that we can just at any time, and I know personally in my own life, when I did go astray and think I could do things on my own, I always felt that my grandma was praying for me, my mom was praying for me, I knew it. And I knew that I was a child of God because I always had this constant reminder, Don, you know that that's not right. We're not doing that. And God was always calling me back. And just there's not enough I can say about the power of prayer. Right. We don't utilize it enough. Well, again, it just highlights that, you know, the Bible's clear. We can't change somebody's heart. Right. Only God can do that, including our own, right? The verse, I forget where it is, but about you know, a leopard changes spots. Um, the answer is no, and the same is true of a human heart. And so just a great reminder, right, of as we minister, as we seek God, to have God work in our own lives right. and then help others as well, that prayer is a huge, huge part of that. Uh, good, Don. Yeah. Patty, over to you. For me, it was identifying areas of change in my own personal walk. It does start with us. It starts with me. And I remember after probably the first, Second day, maybe, Don and I think we're going to go grab dinner. And I said, that's so convicting. I am not nearly the student of the word that I need to be. Mm-hmm. Not nearly. Watching different pastors and counselors very quickly finding in God's word how you can get hope from, from the word. And Don mentioned that earlier in a previous segment, just how important it is to know where to find the truth in the Bible and, and hiding God's word in my heart and so forth. And uh, for me, is also in connection with that, just my devotional life. It's a daily battle for me. I'm a task-oriented person, and I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there who can probably relate to this. I'm probably not alone, as we've talked before. Just that I, I blame the fact that I don't have devotional time on my busy life, and the truth is it's just a priority. And confronting that truth in my own life and saying, no, that, Patty, that's not the truth. The truth is you've prioritized your to-do list over having your time with, with your Lord and Savior. And there was a saying about making sure that, that you never put the work of the Lord as more important than the Lord of the work. Right. And I've seen that, and I've heard it for many years, and I, I guess I just kind of compartmentalized a little bit on that, and this really helped me take a step back and realize that I need to make a higher priority, just having my devotional life be consistent and having time with the Lord and spending time in His Word, memorizing His Word, and um, spending that quality time with Him. So, again, that's a daily battle that I have, but um, I came face-to-face with that. And then God gave us uh, COVID-19, which forced us to stay home. And while my workload didn't get any lighter, I decided that the time that I would normally spend traveling and getting ready to leave the house and that kind of thing was great time to spend in devotional time. And so... It afforded me the opportunity to get that pattern going. And so that worked out really great. It's like the Lord's saying, okay, now you made this commitment. Now here, let me help you along. Mm-hmm. Let me help you with that. Give you a little um, more time for that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, not giving more time in some ways, but in that way, knowing I was committing right. that time was really helpful. Yeah. I, I think I mentioned this to you at some point, but I, I finished a book this last week or two, and there was a man consulting with another guy. He was a consultant working with a guy who wanted to grow in a certain area, and First thing the, the consultant said was, "You can't you can't lead it until you live it yourself." Right. And just so true, you know, boy, true of a lot of people that are in in, in positions like ours or even parents. You know, we try to give advice and mm-hmm. fix our our kids or those we're shepherding, and right. 
why I think, I think you mentioned it, Don, get that log out of your own eye first, right. and then you can help somebody else. Right. Uh, really good. But yeah, you mentioned identifying areas of change. That's really, really great. Um, reminds me of the verse you mentioned earlier, Hebrews 4, where it compares the Bible to a knife or a sword. You know, surgeons don't just go in and just start, you know, they go in and they identify the area that needs to be worked on, and then they, they will cut there and correct there. But uh, really good. Well, back over to you, Don. Well, something you just said about living it. That's another tool I, I think we can use is our past struggles. And one of the quotes that I wrote down is through our trials and experiences and struggles that we gain a voice that we didn't have before, mm-hmm. that people are apt to listen to you if you've been through it already. And you don't think that it's a great thing you're going through at the time, but when you help somebody else go through the same thing, you're amazed at, oh, wow, maybe God allowed that to happen in my life to help other people because now I have a voice I didn't have before. Mm. And it's amazing also how God will bring those people to you. You don't have to seek them out. I I sit and I listen to somebody and sometimes I'm going through the exact same thing that they are. I'm going through this right now too. Let's do this together. I'm learning as well. And I love that God does that for you. If you wake up in the morning and who can I who can I be a blessing to today? But sometimes that blessing is to me. And we can do this together. And guess what? I've been through this, or I'm going through this, and here's how the Lord helped me overcome. And again, hope. Here's how God gave me hope that at the end, we can overcome this. You can overcome this. Yeah, how, how powerful is it to look somebody in the eye and say, I really do understand. I right. really do. Uh, more than you realize, you know. I, I, find, I think at times, you know, we're adults working with kids a lot of times, and I think the kids can look at us as these robots almost that just, they never struggle and would look at a kid even just say, buddy, I just, you have no idea how much I understand what you're going through right now. I've been there. You know, I think of the verse, I love that verse in Second Corinthians 1 right off the bat where he ta- says that God comforts us in, in all our tribulation so we can comfort those in any trouble as well. And um, that's a really great point, you know. Well, I, I already know in my children's life, I will tell them, I was like that at your age, too. They're, what? You did that? Like, they think that we're above. They, they forget that we were children at one time, too. So that's a powerful tool to be able to say, you know what, remember, I was nine as well. Yeah, I mean, don't you think that, that, that struggle is really a prerequisite for, for depth, you know, in a right. lot of ways? Mm-hmm. When life's easy, I mean, we, yeah, we, everyone Nothing looks good. And, yeah, just kind of coast. But when we struggle, we just grow. We're, we're driven to God and can then help somebody else. It's a great point, yeah. Patty, yeah, another takeaway for you? I would say probably part B with my part A in identifying area of changes. My relationship with the Lord, recognizing that my devotional time was a priority, I also realized that because I'm task-oriented, I don't always see the needs that I could see, I'm not always aware. And it, it came very much uh, in front of me that you know, you're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, strength. And what does he say right after that? Mm-hmm. You love your neighbor as yourself. Right. And loving that person, whoever that might be, is going to take time. And they talked about how getting involved in their life is going to get messy. And you won't always necessarily feel like equipped, as Don mentioned. You don't always feel like you're equipped to handle necessarily everything as you're walking through life with them. But to me, that was another priority, was recognizing that my love for God has to be first. Right. But then my to-do list, as hard as it is for me to say this, it's okay if it doesn't get done. Mm-hmm. It's really okay. The people in my life are more important. And so, again, it's a daily reminder for me. Uh, I wouldn't really call this a tool so much as maybe a lesson that I learned right. that I hopefully will help me impact others better. It's just that I need to spend more time paying attention to how can I be the hands and feet of Jesus to those around me and how can I see and hear the things that he wants me to see and hear and then prayerfully, as Don mentioned, reacting to those things and knowing how to deliver the truth to them. Yeah, I've learned in this conversation that you are a, a, a very task-oriented person, right? No question. I, I feel better about myself because of this, to be honest with you. So. There's other people out there, I'm sure, who are task-oriented as I'm well. Sure, I'm sure that there are, yeah. You come across as a great listener and, and a, a organized people person, but yeah. You want to see my list? <laughs> 
Oh, good stuff. Good. Don, another thought from you on this. One of the other takeaways, but you mentioned it in the previous segment, the words always and never. Mm-hmm. Just learning to take those out of your vocabulary and not have them in your toolbox. The things you need to take out. And things like I deserve. Mm-hmm. The way that I these circumstances in my life, I deserve a better life. I deserve a new house. I deserve, but do we really? Right. You know, God didn't promise that everything, if you follow these steps, then your life will be rainbows. Right. If there will be trials, there will be tribulations. Are we prepared for that as we head out into the world? And are we showing Christ when we step out into the world? So for me, it was not just what are the tools, what are the tools I need to take away right. that right. we use. And I catch myself often. Well, you never know. Okay. Sometimes. You know? <laughs> so that, that was a big takeaway for me as well, just taking words out of my vocabulary. What you're saying there, you know, a thought that really sticks out that I've, I've recognized more and more, I think, is when the Bible says that the words... You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Back to the heart, we mentioned the last, the last video, right? Um, you know, our words, every word that comes out of our mouth gives away what's happening. And that's not everybody else, it's me to start, right? right. You know, but even, even helping people, like you were saying there, you know, words like I deserve or attacks like you always, it just shows what's happening inside and so forth. Uh, good. Patty? Uh, We talked quite a bit about the tool of forgiveness. And like love, forgiveness is a choice. I can choose to love, I can choose to forgive or not. It's a decision I can make each and every day. Will I get up today and love those around me? Am I willing to forgive those around me? And I know there's a a discussion about true forgiveness isn't really that until someone's repented. Uh, But nevertheless, in my heart, I can decide whether or not I'm going to let that tear me down or not. Um, and build a wall between my relationship between me and God or me and them. And one of the sayings that they had, I'd never heard it before. I think Dawn said she'd heard it before. Um, But she said, bitterness is like drinking a poison and then expecting the other person to die. And I heard that and I thought, wow, that is so true in life. Is You know, I've had times in the past dealing with bitterness over a situation and recognizing, matter of fact, I had my friend who went to this conference who started this whole thing to begin with confronted me on that and called me out in love. And at first I didn't like hearing it, but it's true. And so listening to them talk again about the tool of forgiveness, making sure that you're willing to forgive and passing that on to others. And going back to there's nothing that has ever been done to us that could be a greater offense than what we have offended Christ and reminding ourselves of that too in our relationships. Uh, that's a great point. You know, I, I, I'll just say, I, I know you agree with this, but with bitterness, we want to sort of attack somebody else in our mind, but bitterness really affects more than anybody. It damages our own our, our own selves, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll jump in here and, and bring up, you know, one of my favorite teachings of Christ is Matthew 18, where Peter asks Christ, you know, how many times should I forgive my brother? And Jesus says 70 times 7. That tells a story about a man, you know, who owed this king this massive amount of money. Um, and then the king forgave him, had, had mercy on him and let him go. And the same man who was forgiven by the king of this massive amount of money turns around and, and finds somebody who owes him $20 and throws him in jail, you know, and, and just would not. And the king just replies and says, you know, shouldn't you have had compassion on your brother like I had compassion on you? It goes back to that Ephesians 4 passage. I love that verse where it says, even as Christ forgave you, I think you just said it there, so also do you, you just said the idea about the fact that, you know, I will never, nobody will ever wrong me anywhere near what I have wronged God. Right. And yet God has found in his heart to forgive me. Right. That's a great, great, great takeaway. Great, great takeaway. Yep. Don, over to you. Uh, the lastly, I think we can't, deny the best tool besides prayer is the Bible itself is, and you said that, um, waking up every day and making it a priority. That was your first point. But I just want to reiterate that constantly reminding myself and yourself of the truths that are found in the Bible. There's promises that God has promised you. And are you constantly a student of the word? And do we believe that Christ is enough? Do you believe that the Bible is true? then why don't we live it? 
that's very convicting to think about. If I truly believe that these are the words that God has for me, why aren't I living it? Why don't I wake up every day and this is my, okay, what God, what do you want to show me today? Like just having that new thirst for God's word and making it my first meal of the day, mm-hmm. rather, you know, and I understand there's people who can't do it first in the day. Just at some point in the day, have you made it a priority? I know when I was had younger children, there was no way I woke up, and that was the first thing on my mind. It was the things I had to do. I'm not really task-oriented, but I have the flip side where I get so scattered that, oh, I forgot. You know, but to me, I have to be purposeful that I am going to make time for God today. Man does not live by bread alone. Right. <laughs> by every word of God, mouth of God. Good, good stuff. Well, on that question, anything else you all want to bring out or jump on? We can move to the next one otherwise. I think I'm good. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Well, the next question we'll address on this, this video is, okay, so as you have shepherded family, students, how has God used you, or what has God used to help others in their process of change and growth? So how, how has God taught you to, to take these things and help others? You know, to me, it's just amazing to watch God at work. Even though I was t- listening to Don talk about prayer, did you know he still answers prayer? <laughs> Sometimes I think we talk about prayer as, we're going to pray about this, we're going to pray about that. But then when you step back and you watch and see God answer, you know, just... Uh, this morning, I received a message that um, a young lady accepted Christ and is someone that her parents have been praying for her. And I was like, praise the Lord. You know, th- we've been praying about this and committing to this. And when you see that God answers that prayer, it's amazing. So just watching God at work and recognizing that we have the opportunity, the privilege to jump on that train and see where God is working and to get on board with him and just see what he's got in store. We have no idea what he has in store. Uh, we know that he, he wants us to share the gospel. We know that. Um, but just getting in, involved in, in people's lives, one of my greatest joys, and I'll just share one brief testimony if you don't mind, was a, a young lady who came to my door, and she began asking spiritual questions. <clears throat> and we're not talking surface level. I mean, she'd come to my door, and i go, Oh, Lord, do I have the answer for her today? Well, what am I going to tell this girl? And she'd have her list of questions, and we went through one after another, and, after, and she'd leave, and she'd think about those, and she'd mull them over, and she'd want them to come back later, and she had more questions. And, and we talked through a lot of things, and she saw a lot of counsel from a lot of people. I know I'm not the only person she talked to, but she was really wanting to know the truth. To sit back and watch this time develop over this young lady's life and to see how she made a conscious choice to accept Christ as her Savior and to see her grow and to want to continue to grow, there's no words for that. How do you describe the joy that, that we can experience when you, you watch somebody who makes that decision and they know full well that this is not because life's going to get so much better for me, um, but I do have a Heavenly Father who will guide me through and and to watch, whether it be a student or a, a young adult or another mom or whatever it might be, accept Christ, is just there's no greater joy. So I would say just get on board with whatever God's doing and jump on it. That's a great reminder. I mean, we think about, you know, as parents wanting to do everything right, and we, we should want to do that. And even in ministry to try to, you know, the counseling, the training, and, and using the word, and we should do that. <clears throat> But man, what a great reminder that it's, it's not us, <laughs> you know. Well, because that, that can be sometimes defeating. Right. You, you feel like you're running around trying to check all the boxes. Did I do everything right today? Did I divvy out the right amount of the Bible, the right amount of this, the right amount of prayer? Have I covered everybody with everything? And you realize in the big picture, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you and to tell you what you're supposed to say. Just be willing to obey him. It's really not that complicated on one hand of being willing and, and sensitive to what he has to say and just do it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a confession as a parent. I, I pray this prayer all the time. Lord, help me to be a great dad and be faithful to you. And where I miss, which I'm going to, please fill in those gaps because I don't even know what they are probably, you know. That's so true. And, um, that is so true. I can relate to that 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a really great point. I, I think it's great. We talk about helping other people, you know, at this point. First point is to remember that it isn't us that helps them. I mean, we, God uses us. It's a privilege, but, right. but it's God that does it. Great stuff. Good. Yeah, I think along those lines is reminding yourself and the person you potentially could be helping that you can only change you. 
you can't change your circumstances. You can't change the people that maybe you have, like you had said earlier, there's the problem between us, but it's you that you can work on. We can't change the other person, but God can certainly work on you personally. And I think about Peter with God telling him to walk on water, that he got his eyes off of Christ and instead start looking at the circumstances. Does God have his hand outstretched to us saying, will you come walk on water, but we're too busy trying to fix you or trying to fix you, or if my circumstance would change, then I could walk on water. But no, let's stop and be introspective and think about where can I personally change rather than the other person. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, and that can be a... a we need wisdom for that because sure. at time, I know we've all talked to people and you're sitting here and they're telling us their struggles and you're thinking the other person in their life is a dirtbag. I mean, they're just, they're just a total loser. And, and yet absorbing that and not, not minimizing that, but also saying you don't control other person. Yeah, you only control one person. Well, compassion. Right. I mean, Jesus had compassion wherever he went. And when dealing with anyone, that's the first rule is having compassion towards whatever that circumstance is. You don't downplay it by saying you're just not trusting God enough, but realizing and um, saying, yes, that is a bummer, what you're going through right now. And that sounds ridiculous saying it out loud, but, you know, that's just, I have compassion and I hear you what you're saying. But again, how are you responding to that or what happened in your past? We can't change but so you can certainly move forward and help heal the wounds that you have. And some of them are deep, and yeah. you, know, you, you don't have, you're at a loss. But again, back to hope, there's hope in Christ that he will heal you, and he will help you overcome whatever the situation may be. So, so applicable, Don. Did you want to jump in on that, Patty? You just no, amen. I'm, yeah. I'm amening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just, you, you talk to a, a wife, and, and you're just, you know, you're sitting here, and, and you're thinking, your husband, what is his problem? What in the world? Right. You know, and yet she, and yet the best way for her to help him and be a, a catalyst and an agent of change for him is, is for her to focus on her own life, you know, and even kids with their parents or, or parents with their kids at times or whatever, you know. I, I think of this story, um, you mentioned Peter, you know, where at the end of the book of John, Jesus tells Peter his, his future. He says, pretty much you're going to be you're going to die a horrible death, you know, when it's all said and done. And Peter's reply is, what about this guy? Yeah. Points to John and says, what about him? And Jesus says, don't worry about John. Yeah, we take care of you. You follow me, if you will. It's a really great point. And, and I think probably, need, you know, I've, I've been in, in, in formal counseling meetings where somebody is just throwing somebody else under the bus. Mm-hmm. And they are probably 100% right and yet it isn't helpful. You want to listen and be compassionate, right? Like you just said. But it isn't helpful with them and their walk with God to focus entirely on how, what a scoundrel this person is. It's got to be you. I used the word dirtbag, by the way, a second ago. Did y'all catch that? I made note of that, actually. I'm like, wow, Pastor Dr. Bob. Dr. Phil here, Dr. Bob. Anyway, yeah. Where did that come from? Anyway. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Dirtbag in the Greek means, and I don't even know, all right? Well, good. Patty, over to you. So we've heard this before, but we can't emphasize enough how important it is to listen. Listen within your family, listen to your friends, listen to people who come in and count your counseling. And the note that I made is a lot of times I'm thinking about how to solve the problem rather than actually listening to the problem. And the problem might actually be what I think it's going to be. It's kind of like finishing someone else's sentence, you know, having to stop yourself and realize, let that person complete their thought. And don't feel like you got to jump in. And um, I find that at home, too, is just being real careful to try to listen and try and catch yourself when you realize that your, your brain's off somewhere else or whatever. And um, trying to bring those thoughts back into captivity so you can be a good listener. It's kind of difficult to help somebody and counsel someone through when you really have no idea. What's going on? Because you weren't listening. So Patty, someone has a hard time listening sometimes. <laughs> Ask my husband; he'll tell you. <laughs> would, would you want to give us a scenario with your husband by any chance about how this looks? What this looks like? Hey, no funny thing. I'll, I'll tell you this morning. This morning, this came up. Um, Micah and John and I were sitting at the table, and I had we had all been, well. Micah didn't go for a bike ride, but the two of us went for a bike ride. And I came back earlier. He wanted to do more mileage than I wanted to do. And we're sitting at the table, and um, John had just told Micah 
I know John said, you know, guess what? You know, we're talking about the advantage of having the wind at your back rather than your face. And so he was trying to say that the wind had blown him home. Well, he asked something about it, and I wasn't really listening. I thought I knew the answer already. And then I realized that I kind of zoned out for a second, so I jumped in and made a comment, which is exactly opposite of what he had just said. And um, John called me out. He goes, you weren't listening. Like, <laughs> well, how about that? You're right. <laughs> but, yep. And so I, you know, in little things, you got to work on it. Cause, again, it goes back to, like with your kids, if you're not listening to them now, yeah. someday they won't be talking. So trying to make sure you're consciously aware of it. Would you guys agree? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, yeah, well, please. also on that note, if you don't listen, somebody else will be. Absolutely. And Great point. There's yeah. so many friends, and with social media, they just Ooh. have to type their thoughts out there, and they'll have 100 comments. And so somebody's listening. Why, why can't it be us? With and our, advising. Right. 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 Earning the right to advise because of their... They listened. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, would you guys agree that, I mean, really, when you care for somebody... You absorb them. You listen to them. You hear them and you feel them and, and, and their emotions and what's behind that, you know. It has to be a conscious effort on mm-hmm. our part, like you were saying. You can be half-heartedly listening, but you're going to give a half-hearted answer. That might be the opposite. Yeah, right. it's work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And I don't think I'm alone in that. It is, it is work to, to really tune out other thoughts and to pay attention and listen. It's so cliche, but I'll, I'll say it anyway, but you're sitting... On the couch, the TV's maybe on, your phone's next to you, <laughs> on your tablet, your laptop. Boy, you've got to turn off several, several knobs when somebody wants your attention, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, again, it is cliche. I understand that. But it is so, so true, you know. Um, when, you, when you love somebody in a Christ-like way and they, they need your attention, you give it to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, very, very good stuff. Good. I think it's, well, I yeah. think it speaks volumes for your children as well. And my husband's recording, so he's not going to like that I'm talking about him right now. But he's really great that if one of our sons needs to talk, he'll put his phone down. You know, I think that speaks volumes that, okay, you're the most important thing right now. What do you need to talk about? And I, it's convicting to me that, you know, working at the school, there's so many kids coming in and out that if someone is wanting to talk to me and going to trust me with the words that they want to say, am I putting everything down and saying, okay, let me fully engage and listen to what you're saying today? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Going back to talking to teens is loving the one you're with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's so easy to be talking to all your friends here on whatever social media site you're on and the very people you're trying to talk to you're not giving them really any attention other than, uh uh-huh, okay, uh uh-huh, and you're paying more attention to this and trying to communicate to them, love the one you're with. Well, it's kind of hard to communicate that if we don't do what Neil does and put the phone down. Put it down and we love the one we're with and pay attention to them. Yeah, we've talked listening in both both segments here. It's a theme. Um, (laughs) Let me just ask you guys, just, just to kind of play this out a little bit, what is, what does that look like in real life? As in, you know, we've talked about the obstacles a lot, you know, the phone and all that, and you've mentioned something that in your family you all do, but what does it mean to listen to somebody, would you say? Well, I guess when she said asking the right questions, showing them that you are listening, so I'm going to ask a question to draw it out more. Mm-hmm. Right. Or repeating what they said, or yeah. um, I think you mentioned it um, maybe together, is that taking notes mm-hmm. while they're talking and um, just, I am paying attention and I'm taking notes so I remember, so I don't forget. Or, you know what, I'm listening, can I pray for you? Or when it's gone and they're at home, if they get a text from you saying, hey, I remembered what you said Monday, you had this interview praying for you as you go into it today, you're reminding them you listened and you care enough to follow up. This is my great, great point, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great one. Yeah, I, I find it. I mean, I find whether here or at home, you know, I'm I'm maybe like you a little bit, and my mind it always has five more things I want to get to, you know, yes. and uh, you know, I, I'm heading out the door to go do this, or I want to, you know, I, I'm not in a time crunch even all the time, but that, but I, I'm getting ready, and boy, if somebody wants my attention, it, it really is hard. It's just, it's a struggle just to stop. <clears throat> but do you think maybe God brings things to your mind in that moment, and you have to do it right then? 
Like I know when I'm packing, I'm thinking I need to bring this, but unless I go and get it right at that moment, I'll get in the car and I know I forgot it. So I try to remember that if God's going to bring them to my mind right then, I need, I mean, we've talked about the phone being a bad tool, but in this case it can be a great tool. You know what, you have it in the palm of your hand. I'm thinking about you right now. I'm going to stop right now, text you that I'm thinking about you and praying for you. Is there anything that God has brought you to my mind for a reason for? And to me, it's very convicting if I don't. Like, oh, and then they tell me later, I went through this yesterday, and I'm like, oh, I thought about you yesterday, but it doesn't really mean anything now. <laughs> Happened twice this week. Oh. Exactly what she's talking about, where the Lord put someone on my heart, and I didn't do anything right then. Right. And you wait three or four days later, and you realize why you should have listened to the Holy Spirit when he was trying to tell you something. So I can totally relate to that, for sure. Well, good stuff. Well, good. Well, we've talked about uh, how... how Tools that God has used in our own lives. We talked about how we, uh, how God, what God has used to help others. Anything else y'all want to add on this, this segment here? Call it segments, like we're, we're a talk show or something, right? You know, before commercial mm-hmm. break comes I know. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Cool. Thanks okay. for listening. Yeah, right. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, thanks. Thank you for watching and listening, and uh, we'll look forward to. Uh, continuing a discussion on our next video, we t- we're going to talk, work through a little bit about children, uh, a little bit about the needs of teenagers, and a little bit of the needs of women in, in particular. Uh, that'll be the next video we do here.